Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at the arcuate fasciculus. Now the arcuate fasciculus is composed of white matter and it is made up of association fibres whose primary role is to connect the temporal and frontal lobes. It's called the arcuate fasciculus because it arcs around the sylvian fissure here. So the temporal lobe is here and the frontal lobe is here. And this arcuate fasciculus has to arc around the sylvian fissure to connect the temporal lobes sitting laterally with the frontal lobes sitting anteriorly. Now what we're looking at here is a 3D rendition um, of the brain uh, and we've got some diffusion tensor imaging data um, combined with that. Now DTI is a technique that allows us to follow the diffusion of water within bundles of axons and it's very very good at delineating the trajectory of white matter within the living brain. Now the arcuate fasciculus, its primary role is in language and you may have heard about it connecting Wernicke's and Broca's areas. Now Wernicke's area sits at the superior part of the temporal lobe and in fact this does also um, extend into the inferior parietal lobe as well. So Wernicke's area sits approximately here and Broca's area sits in the inferior lateral portion of the frontal lobe around about here. What you can see in blue um, is a depiction of the white matter almost like spaghetti strands. The strands beginning here um, in the region of the temporal lobe and terminating here in the region of the frontal lobe. Now the accepted dogma is that the arcuate fasciculus is uh, unidirectional. However, what we really do know now is that it is bidirectional. So, so don't think that these pathways are going in one direction only. They are in fact bidirectional. What I'm going to do now is peel away the surface of the brain but leave the white matter intact so we can see these arcing fibres. So I'm going to crop away much of the left hemisphere and you'll start to see the arcuate fasciculus coming into view. So now we can start to see those beautiful arcing fibres. All right. So if I just do alter the view very, very slightly, here are the fibres within the ends of the fibres rather within the temporal lobe. Here are the ends of the fibres in the frontal lobe. And we can see them arcing around like this. Now the classic description of language function is that Wernicke's area is involved in the receptive aspects of language, i.e understanding language essentially and that Broca's area is involved in the expressive aspects of language that is the production of language and that they are connected together by this arcuate fasciculus. You should recall that if you have damage to Wernicke's area classically you get a receptive dysphasia where the patient is able to speak fluently due to having an intact Broca's area but has very poor comprehension. Conversely, in a patient who has a Broca's dysphasia, they have great difficulty getting the words out, but don't tend to have such problems with understanding because Wernicke's area is intact. There is a rarer type of dysphasia where the arcuate fasciculus itself is damaged, leaving Wernicke's and Broca's areas intact. And these patients have what is known as a conductive dysphasia and one of the deficits that they manifest is that they are unable to repeat a heard word. So you say a word to them, um, it is understood in Wernicke's area, but that information cannot get to Broca's area via this arcuate fasciculus um, because it's been interrupted. So they're not able to repeat words. Finally, um, you know, there's the classic description talking about this little Wernicke's area here, this little Broca's area here. But in fact, this system in the left hemisphere is much, much bigger. So the language network in the left cerebral hemisphere is much larger. And what I thought I'd do just as the last thing is just to add on some more fibers to show you just how dense this network is. So really, this network does look more like this. So I'm adding on systems, I'm just using some controls in my other screen. And I could add on even more but it would just fill the screen essentially. But really this left hemisphere language network looks much more like this 
much larger, much denser, and far more complex than we have yet come to realise. Uh, so thank you for listening to this very brief description of uh, the language centres using DTI data. Um, thanks for listening.